Good morning, Year 12. So here is your next revision video, which is about revising depression. It's the first video of two. So in this video, like you can see on the slide, I'm just gonna start the slideshow now. Um, we are gonna focus on uh, depression and its characteristics. And then in part two, we'll come to the cognitive approach to explaining depression and the cognitive approach to treating depression. Okay, so let's start off. I've put the image there of the black dog of depression because that might be a phrase that you are familiar with and this idea of it being overwhelming and all-consuming and very black, very dark. So just a reminder then that the specification says you need to know the following things and I've put the first one into bold because that's what this video is going to be focusing on and then the other three will come to you in the next video. So the first one is that you need to know and be able to write about what the behavioural, the emotional and the cognitive characteristics of depression are. And then next time we will look at how, <coughs> excuse me, how the cognitive approach explains depression and also how it treats depression with particular focus on Beck and Ellis and also on CBT, cognitive behaviour therapy. Okay, so these definitions, first of all, you might remember these from the DSM uh, the five categories of depression and it's really important that you learn these definitions so we'll come to how to do that in just a second but before we move on to thinking about learning the definitions just a reminder of what the key words actually are and mean and also I'm just going to focus on some of the terms in those uh, some of the words sorry some of the language in those terms because that can give you a really good clue as to what type of depression it is. Okay, so we start off with the first one, major depressive disorder. So if you think about major, that should cue you in to the fact that this is severe depression. The thing you need to remember about a major depressive disorder is that it is often short term. And then you've got almost your opposite to that. And the key word in the second one is persistent. So if you think about something that persists, it continues. And so that's your clue to the definition of persistent depressive disorder, that it is long-term depression or recurring depression, including sustained major depression. So everything in, in that type of depression is about the longevity of it, the long-termness of it, about the fact that sometimes it might come and go, but it definitely keeps coming back. Okay, so after that, uh, we've got disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. Now, if you think about dysregulation, unregulating, and the idea that this is about children who cannot regulate their temper. So childhood temper tantrums, disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. And then the final one, and again, the first word is your clue to this one. So you've got premenstrual dysphoric disorder. And the definition is <clears throat> disruption to mood prior to or during when a woman is menstruating. So an actual depressive disorder called premenstrual dysphoric disorder. So try and remember those four types of depression. Okay, so let's move on. A reminder then to how you might try and remember those types of depression, not something for you to do now, but something after you've watched this video to come back to and perhaps do the following. So a really good thing when you're learning terms and definitions, I'm just going to move myself down to the bottom for now, a really good thing is to put your term on one side of a flashcard and your definition on the other side of a flashcard. Definitely making sure that you only put one term, one definition on each flashcard. And then to use something like the Leitner system, so I've put a, a reminder of what that kind of looks like, but also the YouTube link to a video explaining the Leitner system at the bottom of this slide. So again, when you come back to this, have a look at the Leitner system in action if you've not used it before. But essentially, it's a really good method for keeping on revising what you've got on your flashcards, but doing it in a way that means if you're really confident and you know the term and definition, you don't have to look back at it quite so often. So definitely come back and do some revision of those four types of depressive disorder. Another thing to come back to and do after this video is to have a look at these clips. Now I've put there two clips, sorry, my error. 
three clips now because I just added on the heads up um, clip at the bottom, which has just got something like th uh, 20, it says there, doesn't it? 20 male celebrities who talk briefly about depression, but obviously lots of links in that as well. And then the second one is um, a World Health uh, Organization clip explaining depression using this black dog analogy, which is really good, really clear. And the first one is somebody, a YouTuber, I think, talking about what it's actually like to suffer from depression. So I think three good clips just to remind you about the sort of reality, the basics of depression. So come back, have a look at all the, of those three. Okay. So this is the focus then of our video today, to learn, to remember, to revise these three types of characteristics of depression, the behavioural, the emotional and the cognitive. And I've just put on there a completely some sort of slimmed down summary of the key things you need to remember if you can't remember any more detail. So let's just have a look. In behavioural, so obviously this is about your behaviour, what you do and don't do. So the key behavioural characteristics of depression are changes to your behaviour, particularly with regard to sleeping and eating, but also changes to your activity levels. We'll come on to some terms you need to know in a second. Possibly aggressive behaviour as well, not for everybody, but sometimes. For the emotional side of things, we're thinking about what, what we call a lowered mood, but to make sure that's really different and you're discriminating really clearly that that is not just feeling a bit miserable. It's a kind of constant, significant lowered mood. Sadness, misery, those sorts of emotions. Anger as well can be a, an emotional characteristic of depression and also lowered self-esteem, feeling that you are worthless, feelings of poor self-worth. And then finally, the cognitive characteristics, just summarising them, not being able to concentrate. And also we've got here bias towards the negative. Again, we're going to come on to that in a minute and look at it in a lot more detail. So let's move on then to the behaviour characteristics. Now again, it'd be a really good idea as we're going through these to try and help you to learn them, to put each one of them on a flashcard or simply to write them down and then to write them down again or maybe even to do some sort of mind map for the characteristics where you've got the behavioural, the emotional and the cognitive on your mind map and to reproduce that mind map lots of times. So here we go. These are your three things that you need to remember when it comes to behavioural characteristics. So the first two are about really clear changes in behaviour in the sense of doing something more or less than you normally would. So the first one is a change in activity levels. Often, but not always, a lowering of activity levels. So a lethargy, a lack of any energy, an inability even sometimes to get out of bed. However, sometimes the opposite occurs and the person suffering from depression and displaying this behavioural characteristic of act, change in activity will actually increase their activity, but in a way that is um, stressful. So they will struggle to relax, they'll struggle to sit still, they might end up pacing up and down. This is called psychomotor agitation. We'll come to that word again in a second. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So the next one is change to sleeping and eating patterns. So do you eat sometimes more than usual? So sufferers from depression could put on weight because they're eating more or they might lose weight because they're eating less. And exactly the same for sleep. They might find it hard to sleep and sleep less, insomnia, or they might actually find it easier to sleep or they might feel like they need to sleep more, which is called hypersomnia. So think of hyper H-Y-P-E-R, and how you normally use that word. So it's sort of meaning extreme amounts of or over, okay? And then the final characteristic, which not everybody shows, but um, often it is the case, is, is a level of aggression. So sometimes that might be a lower level, so it might be irritability. Um, sometimes it might be much more clear aggression, but obviously that can be very significantly damaging. And sometimes that aggression is turned against the person. So we would turn that, wouldn't we, self-harm, okay? So 
change in activity, up or down, change in eating and sleeping, up or down, increase in depression. And these are your key terms that you need to remember when it comes to um, the behavioral characteristics of depression. So you need to remember that psychomotor agitation is this over movement, this inability to sit still or stand still. That insomnia is an inability to sleep. Hypersomnia is sleeping too much. Okay, so three terms to make sure you know. Okay, so we're gonna move on now. We're gonna think about the emotional characteristics of depression. Um, not so many, not, not really any terms here to know, more just learning and making sure you know what the emotional characteristics are. So again, three things. So keep on thinking in groups of three for the characteristics for behavioral, for emotional and cognitive. So three things, a lowered mood, not just feeling a bit miserable, but actually feeling significantly sad worthless, empty, those sorts of things. So that all comes under this phrase of lowered mood. Now, one that would go with the behavior of behaving in an aggressive way is the emotional feeling or feeling angry. So having many more negative emotions, many fewer positive emotions, but this feeling of anger which, um, sorry, I don't know if you've just seen that come up, we'll just get rid of those things. Um, the feeling of anger, which is um, sometimes again, directed towards the self in a behavioral sense. So anger for emotional links to aggression in behavioral. And then finally, lowered self-esteem. So again, feeling a sense of worthlessness, even a sense of self self-loathing so any of those things are important for self-esteem so again summarize those three things group of three and again think of anger linking to aggression in the behavioral characteristics a lowered mood and lowered self-esteem so maybe the word lowered is key for the emotional characteristics okay let's move on the cognitive characteristics so all come up at once sorry about that but it doesn't really matter so again, a group of three things in terms of the way that our brain works and the way that we process information. So the first one is having poor levels of concentration, being unable to concentrate on things that normally you would have been able to concentrate on. That's the first one. <coughs> Sorry about this. The second one is having more, paying more attention to and then dwelling on much more the negative. So seeing the negative in, in everything, in lots of things, but then spending lots of time actually thinking about the negative over and over again. And then finally, this idea of absolutist thinking. So um, this idea that, that sufferers of depression tend to demonstrate thinking that is very, very black and white that they express their feelings and thoughts in very concrete, absolute terms and tend to see things that are negative as total catastrophes. So it's an all or nothing kind of idea, okay? And that key term of absolutist thinking um, or absolute thinking, sometimes it's known as, is really important for you to know and to be able to explain and to remember is part of the cognitive characteristics of depression. Okay, so really it's as simple as that. It's learning, there are three characteristics for bio, uh, behavioral, three characteristics for emotional, three characteristics for cognitive. So try this now. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to have a go at this task ideally just to make some bullet pointed notes i'll give you a little prompt halfway through to help you remember ideally i'd like you to try and do this without looking if you have just made any notes about the behavioral the cognitive the emotional try and do it without that try and remember what we've just gone through okay so jessica is a 20 year old university student her parents have been very worried since she returned home for a holiday. They hear Jessica up late into the night and also notice that she appears to have lost quite a bit of weight. 
Jessica is very sensitive when asked about this and snaps at her parents. In one argument, she says that she hates her parents and herself. In another argument, she says that she did not enjoy being at university and hates visiting her family. She shows no enthusiasm about returning to university after the holiday and has been unable to concentrate on a piece of coursework she has brought home to work on. Here are your two questions. The first one, can you identify what are the behavioural, the emotional and the cognitive aspects of Jessica's state? And based on these characteristics, should Jessica's parents be concerned that she may be suffering from depression? So I'm going to turn off my video now and I'm going to give you two minutes to try and write down some answers for that. And halfway through that time, I'm just going to put on the screen a reminder of those characteristics just so you can remember what the key behaviours are. Oh, I'm coming up on the screen already. Okay, so I'm stopping my video now. Okay, so that gave you a couple of minutes to think about this question. I'm sorry, I put these up quite late, but just a reminder of what the key three things are for each one of the behavioural, emotional and cognitive. Okay, so let's have a look at an answer for these two questions. Identify the behavioural, emotional and cognitive aspects of Jessica's state. And then based on this, should Jessica's parents be concerned? So let's have a look. Okay, so behavioural aspects. She is aggressive. She says, I hate my parents, I hate myself. There's also evidence that she's not sleeping. They hear her, that she's up late. The emotional aspects are her anger. So again, she seems angry about the fact that she dislikes herself and her parents, her lack of enthusiasm. And the cognitive aspect is her inability to concentrate on her assignment. And given that she does show some key characteristics of her depression, yes, her parents should probably be concerned. So if we just go back again, what we haven't got there, we don't seem to have absolutist thinking. She possibly is, though, dwelling on the negative. She did not enjoy being at university. She hates visiting her family. So perhaps you could have put that in there as well. 
Um, you might have said low self-esteem in terms of the hating herself. That would have been very um, appropriate. And obviously the loss of weight as well. So you could have added those things in. So there is an answer, but there are other things you could have said. Okay. So the last thing I would suggest, and again, this is one to do after this PowerPoint and, and lesson is finished, not now, is once you've had some time, perhaps using flashcards to learn those definitions, sorry, those, well, the definition is yes from the very beginning, but also to learn the, um, the characteristics of depression, try these questions without notes, see if you could go through and actually pick up the two marks, the three marks, the four marks from what you have revised and what you have remembered. Okay, so that is the end of our video. That's the end of our part one lesson. So I'm going to stop the lesson now and I will see you for part two. Thank you very much.